All right, welcome. This video is gonna be about adjusting and fixing some mistakes that I made on my autoclave. So as you know, I have my Hurst 15 horsepower boiler and I have my two by three by four foot uh, double door autoclave for spawn production. Well, we were having a little bit of issues with it speeding, it, it uh, coming to pressure in time. It was taking about an hour and a half, almost two hours to come up to pressure. And I realized that I've done a couple of things wrong up on the steam supply side. One of the major things is that regulator. So that regulator is, I believe the word, the term is a correct or uh, a direct operating regulator. So basically there's a diaphragm that when the pressure is below a certain amount, uh, the spring lets the pressure go to the other side. Okay. The downside of that is it doesn't allow the volume that I need, especially when there's only like a couple PSI difference. Like if this is up to 14 PSI and I need to get it to 15 and there's 30 on that side, it's gonna be barely cracked open when in reality it should be full wide open while it's pushing all of the steam in, okay? So you'll see right here, I'll do a quick example of the chamber steam. Okay. So that's how fast it is right now. Hopefully I'll be able to do an a after video, uh, hopefully at the end of this video, and after I replace it with that regulator with a pilot operated valve. So this one works a little bit differently. It has the same diaphragm and valve, but what operates that diaphragm is this secondary pilot. So what happens is when this pilot is reading low pressure, it fully opens the, the entire diaphragm. Um, so this is, one, it'll flow more, and then two, it's less likely to clog because it's slamming open and shut versus the other one, which is just kind of cracking and, and whatnot. This one cost about $800, so it definitely was more to, to buy, but it, I should have bought this in the first place. It's definitely one of those things that uh, the, the boiler installer was not really familiar with autoclaves, neither was I, and I probably should have paid somebody to look over it. Uh, this is definitely where like consulting and having a professional do stuff saves you money in the long run because this mistake cost me um, probably a couple thousand dollars in spawn production because we haven't even started yet because of this. And then on top of that, uh, $600 in a regulator that I just is going to sit on a shelf now because I bought the wrong one up here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, one thing that I'm glad that we did, you can see these unions. That makes it very easy. Whenever you're doing steam fittings or natural gas, make sure you put unions in whenever you do a branch. It makes it a lot easier to, to maintenance parts. So we have like a union there. We also have another union, I wanna say further down around the control valve. So that way if we need to ma maintain that part, otherwise you gotta take apart the whole thing just to get at one part. That's the beauty of a union. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that union down, put the new regulator up, uh, the one thing with the pilot is it needs to have a reference that is 10 times the diameter. So this is a one inch pipe. It would have to be a uh, reference pressure at least 10 inches down. I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way to over here, which is the end of the jacket manifold. I'm gonna put a T in there and then tap off of that to get my, my reference pressure. So that way it should, it should have a nice low reading when everything's open. So that way it'll stay wide open until everything comes up to pressure. All right, welcome back. The pilot operated regulator is now installed. I still have to do the sensor, the pressure sensor, which goes on the little port in the middle of the picture there on the side of that pilot on the top regulator. Uh, once again, that pilot operates the big valve to be fully opened or fully shut. Um, so even though I don't have it hooked up, it is still going to have it fully open. It won't regulate it, but it will fully open and I can test the flow. I already cheated and I tested the flow and what a difference. This should really make a difference with uh, running the cycles. Three, two, one. Um, night and day difference so that I'm very happy about that uh, once again wrong regulator should have been pilot operated and it wasn't so the next thing that I'm going to be working on today is my traps so I have 
for those of you who don't know what a trap is, this is the trap, okay? It's basically uh, kind of like a thermostat switch. When it is below a certain temperature, usually like your steam pressure, 220 or whatever it is, when it's below that pressure, that temperature, it's gonna be open. So what happens is all of the air and cold water goes out it, and then it either goes back to the holding tank, which is atmospheric in this setup, or for my chamber, and now that's, that's the jacket. For the chamber, I just go right to the exhaust, okay? Because I don't wanna be putting millet tea water into my boiler. You know, anybody who's run a, ran a uh, pressure cooker knows that at the end of a cook, all your water is like a tea of whatever the heck you're cooking, and I don't wanna feed that into my boiler and, and, and crap out my boiler. Uh, so, one thing that I ran into is that this was hanging up. The pilot, or I'm sorry, the trap on my, my jacket last cycle was hanging up. It wasn't closing. So I talked to TR, who also has a boiler, Earth Angel Mushrooms, and he said, oh, well, just turn your switch off. I said, well, I didn't have a switch. So what I'm going to do is I have a switch for my, I have a switch for my chamber. You can actually say I have two two valves, these are pneumatic valves, okay? So I switch, electric switch up there, that switch is a solenoid, then it supplies air to these little pistons that actuate these valves. So you can see I have two of them there. One of them is my exhaust. Now that's if I wanna do a gravity, so a, gra a gravity cycle where you just open your exhaust up and then inject the steam. And what happens is, hey, you saw that, that blanket of steam coming down. Well, that blanket keeps pushing down, pushing down. And as long as your exhaust is wide open, it'll push all the air out. And then, um, and then you turn off your, your exhaust and you switch to trap and then it starts building up pressure. So uh, basically I'm gonna have all or both of the traps. I'm gonna have chamber trap and jacket trap both on the same switch, on the, on the same airline. So I, I bought a little T and I'm just gonna branch off of it and that's it. So I'm gonna do that next and then I'm gonna run the cycle check that it is actually quicker than it was before which I, i'd imagine it will be just looking at that steam rushing in it was a huge difference so before it took uh from the start this is chamber only no jacket it took uh 20 minutes for steam to hit the exhaust so i'm going to see what it is um same same test with the new new valve so Okay, I got my steam line in, the pressure sensor, that's the, uh, the copper line right there. I teed off of my manifold here. That's actually the manifold that feeds into the manifold that feeds the jacket. You can see there's four jacket inserts uh, for the steam. So off the bat, I could tell right away that we're doing much better because with it full flowing into the chamber, I actually have nine psi of steam previously this was showing zero like it was flowing but there was not enough flow with the restrictions to actually make any pressure so that's already telling me that we have a lot more steam i started this at 17 it is now 21 or 16 it is now 21 and i have pressure sensors there's the uh or temperature sensors this one's on the the inlet this one's about on the first shelf. Uh, the third one is actually just a couple inches from the bottom. And that was the cool thing that I noticed last time that uh, it's really like a wall that this one's 200 degrees. And the next one that is only maybe six inches lower, it's still only 65 degrees. And you can even feel it on the, uh, well, when it was moving slower, you could really feel, I could feel right here is about a hundred. Here is like room temperature. But um, when it took, what was it, 20 minutes to do that, I could almost feel the wall, the heat moving down. But um, yeah, we could see it for sure with the gauges. So I, I'm using this data logger. This is a perfect time. I do not like it. Do not get this data logger. Uh, the main thing that I don't like about it is you cannot have external power. So you have to run it on batteries. The batteries last eight hours and then that's it. So if you're going day in and day out, operations using a data logger well this is not for you um, so I'm trying to find one that that can get plugged in that every day we can run a log it'll save the the autoclave cycle 
uh, just in case, you know, if we want to make sure that the cycle ran complete, yada, yada, especially when, when we get into automating it, I want to make sure that nothing went wrong on the run during the automation cycle. So I'm going to try to look around for a better one. This was about $180. Uh, data loggers go up to thousands of dollars, but I'm trying not to spend that much. Uh, but I definitely want one that will at least last a week without having to change the battery. I'd rather it just be, you know, AC or, or have a, a, a DC converter for it. Um, so as you can see, it's still, still warming up. We're at 24, 23. So, I mean, we're at uh, 16, not, not even, not even 10 minutes. And I, I think we're almost up to, we're almost up to pressure or up to temperature. So this is a gravity cycle. Like I explained before, I have my chamber exhaust is open. My chamber steam is on. Uh, so it's just going to exhaust out through my exhaust pipe. This is actually cold right now because it's not up to pressure yet. It's not pushing steam out the exhaust yet. Uh, looks like it's about to hit. Starting to creep on that last one. And, it, and it'll just jump. It'll it'll go from, you know, 70 degrees to 80, 90, 100, to, you know, 200 in a matter of 30 seconds. Uh, maybe a minute at the most because it's just pushing that wall of air down with a wall of steam. So, super cool tool. I, I use this bag for the... the the sensor in the bags as well. It's not just for uh, it's not just for doing, you know, empty chambers. Usually I'll do intake, exhaust, and then I'll do two in the bags. I'll do top bag and bottom bag uh, to to probe the bags. You know, I think that's actually in the water in the bottom. That's why it's not spiking as hard. I had from all the testing, I had about a half inch of standing water. And I'm not sure if the pressure has pushed all the water out of the bottom of that chamber yet. Something's screaming at me. I'm losing steam pressure. I don't want to have the boiler running right now just because you can't hear me over the blower blowing. So I have it turned off. We're down to like 10 PSI of steam out of the boiler. So you can see that's already starting to drop off. But so far I'm pleased. I could tell you it's at least twice as much steam. Uh, I think that so solved the problem. I still got to do the trap, but uh, that's a pretty easy install. I just got to put it all together and, and throw it in. But yeah, uh, this just goes to show, you know, paying people to do the job and have a consultant. I really should have pulled in a, a company, but uh, the only company that I talked to was Betastar. They wanted like $1,200 just to have a guy drive out here for the day. And then it was like $200 an hour. So I chose not to. In the end, it, it actually worked out better, I guess, because, uh, well, I don't know, right? I don't know what I don't know that I did wrong on this, but that was at least one mistake that I do know about that cost me, you know, $700 um, and two or three weeks of not making spawn. So, um, yeah, it just goes to show if, if you can hire an expert or get somebody on, the, on board to, to show you the product, definitely do that. So, all right, take it easy. Keep on mushroom and hope you like this video. Subscribe to my Patreon if you want to help support the channel. I do not have uh, a monetized channel. If you haven't noticed, there's no commercials. So, um, yeah, hop on board. If you need mushroom growing supplies, MyersMushrooms.com. YouTube actually blocked MyersMushrooms.com. So, uh, good game, YouTube. Uh, not going to slow me down. All right, take it easy. Bye.